In this question, a young female is being evaluated for infertility. A histogram image below is obtained as part of the comprehensive evaluation. Which of the following embryonic processes failed in this patient? A. Fusion of the paramesonephric ducts, fusion of the mesonephric ducts, differentiation of the mesonephric ducts, involution of the paramesonephric ducts, fusion of the paraurethral folds. So we can see from the uh, picture that in the pelvis, I can't see any uterus, I can't see cervix, I can see any ovary, I can't see any fallopian tube, I can just see random bits and pieces. So this kind of presentation where we don't have uterus, don't have cervix, don't even have upper one third of the vagina, we don't have much anything in the pelvis of a female. This is due to abnormal fusion of the paramesonephric ducts. When the paramesonephric ducts fuse, they form the uterus, the uterine tubes, the cervix, and upper one third of the vagina. None of this is seen in this in this picture. So the answer obviously is going to be which of the following embryonic processes failed in this patient, which is going to be fusion of the fusion of the paramesonephric ducts. But what about choice B? Fusion of the mesonephric ducts. Fusion of the mesonephric ducts in males it gives rise to ductus deferens, epididymis, ejaculatory duct, and in and in males and in females it gives rise to Gartner ducts. So that is for choice B. And what about choice C, differentiation of the mesonephric tubule? Mesonephric tubules and mesonephric ducts, these are same derivative. Mesonephric ducts, uh, mesonephric tubules from the tubes, the efferent tubules from the testes to the epididymis. So pretty much B and C is similar. They're talking about the same area. What about D, involution of the paramesonephric ducts? Involution of the paramesonephric ducts gives rise to vestigial appendages of the testes, nothing else. And last of all, fusion of the urethral folds. Fusion of the defective fusion of the urethral folds gives rise to the epispedius and the hypospedius. So let's take this opportunity to read a little bit more about the paramesonephric duct. This is on page 131, first day 2012, under embryology. So, paramesonephric is called the Mullerian duct, and this structure it gives rise to. It gives rise to the fallopian tube, it gives rise to the uterus, to the upper one third of the vagina, the lower two thirds of the urogenital sinus. It may present as primary amenorrhea. Okay, well, if you don't have uterus, how are you going to have menses? But what's interesting is that female with this kind of problem is going is going to develop secondary sexual characteristics and the reason they're going to develop secondary sexual characteristics is because they might have functional ovaries well the fact that they're going to have functional ovaries depends on how messed up their paramesonephric duct is or how much of the fusion hasn't happened because if the fusion is impartial then we can have something called the bicornuate uterus, which kind of looks like that. Oh, I'm so bad with these diagrams, but you get the idea. We can have like two poles of two uterus kind of coming together. You can have a bicornuate a uterus. And this happens because it results, it's a result of incomplete fusion of the paramesonephric ducts. It, this is associated with urinary tract abnormalities and infertility. So again, this is on page 141 on first day 2012. If you want to read up on it, I think it's a great way to study paramesonephric duct.